Episode 10, China Coin. Hello, uh, Hiroja Shaib here, and here to talk about uh, the de a little bit of the development when it comes to the cryptocurrency space. In particular, my thoughts about uh, China and cryptocurrency. Uh, so I've talked about it, a little bit about China in the past, particularly with Bitcoin Cash, how I feel that uh, Bitcoin Cash might be a government-backed uh, Chinese coin. Uh, that seems like it'd be the development, um, but it's not the only one. And I just want to talk about China and its space. I've talked about it in the Music of the Shy podcast when I talked about the uh, Bitcoin block size development and how uh, debate, I should say, and how uh, China, uh, you know, centralization of mining, a lot of the mining is taking place in China. And the reason it has to do with like electricity, the fact that they have access, direct access to the hardware, they're developing all the hardware, the ASIC chips and stuff like that is manufactured in China. So they get that at, you know, pretty much at cost or the development themselves, the electricity with the hydro uh, electric uh, dams and stuff like that nature makes it, electricity in general, just very cheap in China. As a result, the four major, four major, uh, mining companies are based in China and that that has uh, some qualms especially when you have the uh, Great Firewall of China uh, which makes uh, pushing out information there's a there's a drag there's a little bit of a lag not significant at this point in time but there is a lag and it can be significant and when you come into like a global payment processing type of service where even a fraction of a second could matter for the blockchain technology as far as propagated mining and just in general, the way uh, China has um, its government, and we'll get into it in this episode, has cracked down on cryptocurrencies and the centralization when it comes to its, its economy and things of that nature, while it has this kind of duality where it has a central, centralized economic system, but also allows for some form of capitalism within their country. And they have all this planning and a, a lot of things are going on with that. And we'll break it up for those who thought about China in general just overall, but I just want to touch on just basically how I think like Bitcoin Cash and this new thing called NEO, which started out as what is called AntShares, uh, AntShares, uh, uh, A-N-T, uh, which has been rebranded to NEO, is an Ethereum-based blockchain system. Uh, it's using this technology called Smart Contracts 2.0, and it's using a programming language uh, that's everyone's programming language instead of Ethereum, which is Solidarity, which is a fairly, uh, new system for the blockchain space fairly new as when it comes to programming in general and by using a, a programming language that everyone kind of utilizes uh, it allows NEO to have uh, more developers working on that particular smart contracting smart contract blockchain form but it seems to be developing in a centralized fashion in China and I, I think this is a hint uh, China has hinted they're signaling that they are not only getting the cryptocurrency space but they're very much making things Chinese based. Uh, this is something they've done historically with all their goods and products and services. Uh, so let's kind of get into that. So, all right. So starting kind of a little bit of last year, China has been hinting. Uh, There's a few scams that were going on within the space uh, where they were just basically pyramid schemes that China cracked down on. And in the beginning of this year, they cracked down, China cracked down on their exchanges. Uh, they shut them down briefly, and then they forced the exchanges to do three things. One, to comply with uh, the people's, uh, open their books to the People's Bank of, of China uh, so they can get scrutinized, uh, which is basically the government-backed base uh, banking system. It's basically like uh, the Fed and the Treasury Department were one in the same, basically. Um, that's pretty much the People's Bank of China. It's like Chase Bank or take your biggest banking system. Treasury and Fed wrapped all to one as the People's Bank of China is how it basically operates. Two, uh, they stopped the bots that might have been kind of pumping up the liquidity within those exchanges. They wanted to actually have like real hard backing when it came to the crypt cryptocurrency and stuff, not this wiggy wongy stuff. Uh, some of the Bitcoin, Chinese Bitcoin exchanges, there were a lot of arbitrage was very big and wild at times between exchanges outside of China versus exchanges in China. And third, uh, KYC and AML compliance, both for the Chinese but abroad uh, institutional programs there. And that has happened. Uh, if you want to utilize uh, Chinese exchanges now, you have to give up your documentation and 
go through that process. Uh, the other thing they did was they cracked down on mining. They started la la late last year, but now seriously vain about it. And a lot of mining companies that were out there in different providence have shut down. Uh, some of it has to do, uh, maybe they weren't the right company or the manner that they were doing it or how they were configured, uh, they've shut down. And so China has trying to get a grapple on cryptocurrency. And the third thing they've done is they have openly stated through the People's Bank of China and the, was it the director, what's his name? I wrote it down. Yao Quinn, uh, the director of technology, has stated that the People's Bank of China and China in itself are looking to do a cryptocurrency, a national cryptocurrency, and backing, and they release papers internally uh, within their uh, scientific community to allow for uh, the development of a cryptocurrency backed by the Chinese government. And maybe the Bitcoin Cash is an experiment on that, in a sense. A lot of the companies behind it are backed by uh, you know, Chinese company Bitmain, mining exchanges, uh, the different platforms that open up. If you look just throughout the different types of merchants and exchanges that are accepting Bitcoin Cash, a lot of them are based in the southeastern region. And a lot of it might have to do just because of the economic power of the region that China is, there might be some kind of backdoor signaling that uh, Bitcoin Cash uh, might be a Chinese back coin, a government back coin. That might be a little bit of speculation on myself, but it's definitely indications are strong indications that NEO is a Chinese government-backed uh, type of system, uh, which is developed by, by a company called OnChain. And a lot of these, if you have to understand something about China, a lot of these companies, much like uh, companies in the Middle East, um, in Russia, there a lot of these companies have like governmental and private intersections where the government either has a direct hand or they have like a soft hand and there's certain players and people or families that have control or party members have control of these different companies. Um, they might have a say or input or a shareholding. And so there's a lot of intersection when it comes to this stuff. And there are other times where many of these companies develop on their own, they don't have that, but the Chinese government may come in later on and depending on what that company is doing, may put a soft touch or a hard touch depending on what the company is doing. Um, China in itself is trying, it's been pivoting a lot the last 20 years to make itself a global economic power. Uh, we'll talk about this when I, when I talk about 2020, how that's a very important year globally, but particularly for China. They have some, a lot of goals set for the year 2020 for them that they want to do. And having a backed cryptocurrency, this new economic financial instrument under their sway, if you will, under their control, could uh, intersect in there as uh, they try to launch themselves as being a um, a superpower, a global economic superpower. Right now they have significant regional influence within their region. They do have global influence, but it's not to the state that where the United States is or Russia is or even Europe as a whole or little individual con countries like Germany and, and England have on the economic platform, if you will, in China. China is pushing its way up into there. It's trying to develop itself to where it has sway on the global economy. It has a bigger piece of that pie, if you will. And being in this, the technology space of cryptocurrency could be a mechanism or means of them doing that to be basically um, the country or the go-to country or in charge or sway of the, of the economic platform of this century, which is what blockchain technology, which was you know, Bitcoin is going to be. What will that do for decentralization of cryptocurrencies or the, the economy itself? That's, that remains to be seen. Uh, having a centralized cryptocurrency, whether that is going to work or not, we're, we're going to see. Right now, it looks like NEO and even to some extent Bitcoin Cash are pretty centralized, if you will, with the mining platforms and things of that nature and the nodes and how it's operating and the, the wallets and development is, hasn't spread out to much like a uh, Bitcoin has or any of the other open source decentralized digital currencies have. Um, but I understand why economically China wants to do that. If you want to be a global player, this would be the best way to get a, a strong economic footing into this area and build up and build out. And also historically speaking, uh, China when it comes to any type of instrument, uh, social media, um, merchandising, um, manufacturing, 
they strongly believe on Chinese based um, companies or origins. Uh, for example, WeChat, Weibo, Al Alba, these are all very similar to Western platforms. Uh, their search engine, Badu, uh, like they're basically the equivalents of Facebook, Amazon, um, Google, but they're Chinese based. Uh, WeChat is like a combination of like Twitter and Facebook all together. And plus the fact that China has already, I would say the last 10 years, has very strong with the whole mobile payment platform system. They're very strong. Everything is very, very much mobile payment systems. Uh, so culturally speaking, they're they're way ahead versus um, Western development countries. It's people are slowly getting into the mobile payment system. I mean, people are using their phones for payments for like Apple Pay, Google Pay, Vimo, things of that nature. But it's still slow going. You still see people sliding their cards and stuff like that. Versus in China, where it's just a tap of their phone, getting their picture taken to enter into stores, or receiving payments for things of that nature, paying for different stuff online which is very hard to do in the Western culture, you know, paying to have access to articles or media content, things on an individual basis instead of subscription basis. Uh, even though they do have subscription basis in WeChat for like different channels and stuff like that, they've already been culturalized to that type of platform. So it makes sense for them, um, both economically having the next control, the next financial instrument, and merging that with, um, they're already culturally speaking, um, being Chinese centric with a lot of their their companies and manufacturing and, and uh, bases having uh, their their uh, infrastructure being of Chinese origin and not Western origin or from other some other country but from Chinese base and going out like that if they choose to go outside of the country uh, with their different platforms it's just really recent like some of their platforms like Alba and WeChat and things of that nature have gone beyond beyond China and that a lot of it has to do with the, the Great Wall of China, um, censorship and infrastructure and things of that nature when it comes to that. Uh, but at the same time, they economically don't, for a lot of them, don't really need to. Uh, simply the fact because there's a billion point five billion people in China, there's, that's a lot of people, they, a lot of dollars floating internally within their, within their country and their little regional influences if they do branch out into you know, like Singapore and Japan, Korea, uh, Burma, things of that nature, uh, when they do branch out there with all their economic agreements, that still pulls money directly into to China. They don't necessarily have to go with everything into the Western space or into the global space for, for all their different uh, manufacturing and companies and products, which is why a lot of times when you hear about certain Chinese companies, when they do enter the space, it's fairly new, new to us. Um, on, on the western end uh, with some of these companies have been around 20 or 30 years internally in China and they kind of like debut to like billions of dollars here in the states uh, when they get listed or when they make deals or mergers here with western countries and the reason why I find this very fascinating personally is because it speaks to the heart of a certain core philosophy within the cryptocurrency space about getting away from government control and now you're seeing investment in time and money of private assets both on western and uh, with internally within uh, within China to these different kinds of coins that are obviously looking to be uh, government backed and government controlled assets and what does that mean for that the future of that financial instrument if China is successful of having something like Ethereum which is a smart contract platform being Chinese centric or Chinese controlled uh, by companies and, and having government say what you will. If Bitcoin Cash turns out to be the same thing, what does that say for other cryptocurrencies in this space when you have billions of dollars of assets which um, are tied up into government institutions pouring into a government-centric coin? What does it do for the decentralized coin? Um, will it uh, get outlawed? Will, will it get banned? Uh, Will it dry up because there are not enough um, funds or accesses to it? Because why use this decentralized, not uh, backed by central power authority cryptocurrency, which overall will be better for the individual, or that financial instrument, same financial instrument, but backed by the old system that's been around for centuries. And so there, there will be a clash and a battle. I don't know if it's going to begin, begin that clash in battle will begin in China 
or if it will people will see what's going on in China and try to duplicate it um, in the Western space. I mean, you do see a lot of banks saying that they're going to um, do blockchain technology internally and try to make it available for their customers. But and there's a few government organizations looking and doing studies, but this is the first serious like government pouring finances and in, in, uh, influence into the cryptocurrency space for a government centric instrument. Um, you know, they already stated that the public people's public in China are going to do a cryptocurrency uh, backed by the Chinese government. Uh, Neo and Bitcoin Cash look like there's a heavy uh, influence or a uh, heavy influence of a Chinese centric type of a coin. What will that do for the Bitcoin and all the different crypto coins out there? Um, will they go underground and become a gray market thing? Will they have to have um, be more nimble um, in their development? Maybe they have to be more privacy centric. Maybe they need to be more distributed uh, than they are currently right now. Because right now it's very heavy in the Western world. Yes, you see, you know, nodes and. People utilize it, you know, particularly in the Southeast, you know, China, Japan, and Korea are the, one of the biggest heavy users of cryptocurrency. And then you have India, and then you have the West, America, uh, England, and Europe, uh, Russia to some extent. But it's not quite as distributed as it could be or should be, considering that, you know, the way mobile and internet devices are getting, getting out there, uh, the way the internet is proliferating throughout the world. It seems that the cryptocurrency space is not quite getting as far and wide as it could be. And so, with that challenge, you know, what could the cryptocurrency space do to counter that? Um, will they have to pour more emphasis on these decentralized systems, maybe more educational tools, uh, maybe more education tools that are um, speak to, that are translated in uh, Mandarin or Cantonese for the Chinese people to utilize and see and understand and maybe get beyond the great wall, great firewall of censorship that happens in China so that um, the Chinese people who are already heavily into the Bitcoin cryptocurrency space want to use Bitcoin but are are being challenged by their government in and of itself to maybe push in their money into a different direction than um, in Bitcoin. And a lot of it has to do with like China, you know, all the governments don't want this capital flight of, of income leaving their their little ecosystem into other instruments, into other countries, or to be uh, put into savings, not spent at all. Um, which is a challenge that cryptocurrency does for the current financial infrastructure. It does emphasize on savings. It does emphasize that you're not naturally nationally uh, tied with your economic wealth to to one nation. You can actually, you know. What we see with the ICOs, uh, invest into companies and ideas and concepts um, anywhere in the world at any given time, 24-7, 365 days a year. Um, what else did I want to talk about China Coin? I think I want to save a bit more of some of the Chinese developments. Um, there's more about this, uh, particularly with 2020 coming up what that means for China, uh, what that could mean globally speaking. There's also, you know, certain economic packs that China has done that will uh, already was the path for them 2020 prior to the invention of Bitcoin that was supposed to put them on the global platform. But now with blockchain technology and, and many of the countries that they already have economic packs, um, trade agreements with already in the cryptocurrency space heavily, how that could position China to being um, the leader when it comes to uh, development of blockchain technology. More importantly, I think you're going to see, uh, we're already seeing with Bitcoin Cash a little bit. Uh, we definitely know just from statements within China that they're looking to nationalize some kind of nationalized form of cryptocurrency. But there's a launch of NEO, which is supposed to be this Ethereum Chinese based uh, coin, that we're going to see a lot more. Of these Chinese-based coins, um, whatever, whether it be color coin, uh, whether it be some kind of uh, blockchain te technology of atomic swapping, which allows them, you know, maybe the neo and uh, that national currency swapping back and forth, uh, whatever could be developed uh, in this space as a financial instrument, you're going to see a Chinese equivalent, and I think you're going to see it very, very rapidly. 
um, because this is this is the future. This is where uh, finance finance is going, and China's hip to the game, and they're very long term thinkers. They plan it decades in advance. They do, to some extent, know how to pivot more uh, readily or more easily than other countries, but not as nimble as maybe they could be. Um, they don't pivot quite as often as maybe perhaps they should, but they, they do pivot, I would say, more so than, the, than uh, Western countries do when it comes to course corrections of their economy or policies within their government that doesn't quite work. I think they've learned the lessons of certain histories when it comes internally within their country, as well as what they've seen externally, um, the failures of their governments. Um, China has learned to absorb that, take that knowledge, and, and change from within. But that's just my thought on the matter, considering that right now Bitcoin is, uh, as of this recording, trading above 4000 I think the last time I looked was like $4,085. Uh, Bitcoin Cash is around 321. Um, Ethereum is 304. And this uh, NEO, which is Ant Shares, which has been around just developed this year, is around uh, $51.14. So, uh, it seems like these newer coins, when they get launched, they do have a like really quick higher value. Then they crash a little bit and then they go back up. We saw that with Ethereum, uh, Monero, Zcash. Uh, they're all trading fairly high around the $100, $200, $300 range. And it would be interesting to see what that does for the value of Ethereum with their smart contracts, the development there, if people are going to shift to NEO because it's much easier to develop. Uh, Bitcoin Cash again is going to change its difficulty sometime this week. We're mining. Uh, the mining difficulty is going to lower, so there might be more miners on that. Uh, more and more merchants and companies are um, allowing for Bitcoin Cash to be utilized on their platforms, whether it be exchanges, uh, Changely, which is a coin swapping mechanism, and uh, chain, chain shift. What was the other? Shape, shift, shape shift also allows for Bitcoin swapping, Bitcoin cash swapping, uh, more merchants are accepting, uh, the transaction fees are still very low on Bitcoin cash, uh, people are still dumping it, but people are also buying it up and holding. So it, it remains to be seen um, where this is all going, it's very interesting. It'll be interesting to see how the year ends out, considering um, there's still a very strong hint that there will be another fork come November. Many businesses still want the two megabyte raise. Uh, Segwit hasn't quite locked in yet. It's in its final phase. Doesn't look like there's going to be any snafus or anything like that. It will lock in on August 22nd, August 23rd. Uh, but November is going to be like the D-Day to see if there's going to be another fork and we're going to have a, either a third Bitcoin or not. Or you might start seeing a shift of people going to Bitcoin Cash because that's where the bigger blocks are because they have bigger blocks and what Bitcoin Core has been saying about centralized mining or centralization of uh, the cryptocurrency, people might not might reject that. Again, all this is, you know, time will tell. But I do think that with the recent stories about NEO, which used to be called AntShare, so it's now rebranded to NEO, with this Ethereum coin coming out that's very Chinese-centric or Chinese-based, backed by a Chinese company, um, and Bitcoin Cash still having significant Chinese influence with the mining and things of that nature and the merchants and the exchanges that um, a government centric coin is kind of here. It's kind of here, at least kind of backed here and it remains to be seen how as a decentralized open source uh, system how we face that particular challenge. How we counter that because this is something people, many people expected and just proving, a, proving that a decentralized system is a far better system. Um, again, we might, might need to redouble our efforts on our educational, um, getting awareness out there about why it's more important to be decentralized, why it's more important not to have central planning or a, a government-backed or company-backed coin out there. Um, Re-emphasizing the utility and the value of cryptocurrency in general as a financial instrument. Um, 
that is powered by people and not that corporations or governments or pre-existing um, institutions that have been out there that is just powered by the individual or collective effort of individuals and not one centralized authority. So that's it. That's my thoughts of sharing on it. Um, I'm going to continue my, dis you know, sharing my discussion about China, particularly about China, the year 2020, and some of its uh, economic agreements and what that could mean um, on later episodes. I think my next episode is about how we need to really close the loop in the cryptocurrency space about, uh, you know, people workers getting paid in uh, cryptocurrency, paying their bills in cryptocurrencies, those vendors in turn paying their bills in cryptocurrency and their workers in cryptocurrency and just kind of trying to get that loop closed and how we need to really uh, focus our energies on that so that way people can live their full existence on crypto and not have to change out into fiat or change into fiat or anything like that that they can earn, mine, grow, uh, change out, swap out in crypto, do everything in crypto and not worry about the um, dying or corrupt uh, current economic system that we all abide by. So that's it. Uh, those are my thoughts. Uh, thank you for listening and to the men.